again, everyone. It is your Black Knight. As we continue the the garage review, trying to see if there's any place I can find parking, but perhaps by removing cars and selling them off or doing something with them, we get to a point where it's you know we're starting out with the RC Bandito, which I'm not going to remove. There's no way of gaining a parking space here, but here you have it. First of all, why is there a skull on the table? Is that like a plastic decorative skull for? I mean, you, you are putting Arena War stuff here, but are you just getting is that an actual? Never mind. Let's not let's not discuss. But as you can see, we have here the midnight pumping vapid uh, pickup truck with bombs attached. As we step into the arena garage area, some of those expensive cars I have come from Arena Wars. And this is the what? Anis Future Shock ZR380. Fast. It's supposed to be one of the fastest of the cars. I do find its handling lacking. Like, I could almost be talked into selling this. That's a thing. But we're not going to for right now because honestly, I would lose so much money on this. Like, you'd make money back, but you'd lose half. Like, if you got. A couple million back, that means you've lost two or three. It's just not worth doing. And it's, again, an attractive car. Uh, Absolutely. The Dollar General, yes. Uh, it's, it's what? The Apocalypse Sasquatch, I believe, is what it's officially called. Yeah, but we, we've we done this up in honor of everyone's favorite discount mart, or at least one of your favorites. And I don't have a ram on it or anything like that, or the big fist or anything, or whatever else you could put on this. Because if you can climb on top of cars, it kills them. So why wouldn't you just put these big old wheels, the big old, big old dollar wheels, and the dollar general colors to the just use them as best as you can. So that was built to a theme, the dollar general. Uh, this is called what the sprite. It's not named. It's it's you know, it's it's an issy. I call it sprite because it was we did it up in uh, in lime colors here. Really kind of an, an overpowered little thing as far as what it is. Between the ram and the jumps and the turbos and the flames and the the mines and the mine launchers, it's ridiculous how much is crammed into this little car. And so that's that's another keeper. This one that one seems a lot of work, especially in uh, Monsters versus uh whatever it is, this you know, Issy versus Monster however they call that game mode. I haven't done it in a while. The last V8. I have a couple cars called the last V8, one on each character. This is the clean one. This is as Mike Rockinansky there would have driven it out of the parking lot at, at the police station looking for vengeance. And later on, we have, you'll see the rusty one. And then in another video, when I, on my rusty, you'll see the, the crazed out version of it that we built for that. That doesn't match anything, but it looks cool. That's just a beautiful car. It really is. It'd be nice if they'd given us like a police force livery. I don't believe they have. That's why this looks as it does. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, you know, with the Monza front end kind of thing. Beautiful car. The Lemonade Train! Again, as I have one outfit that's the Lemonade Man with the Lemon Head. This is one of the vehicles that would be a go-to. I actually own multiple of these Cerberuses, and they're just great. They're just great for just ramming through stuff, dumping mines, and shooting bizarre flames at people for not a whole lot of reason. It's expensive, but I think it's worth it. Now this one, this uh, this you know, custom Apocalypse Dominator, it's an interesting thing on this one. I don't remember the exact circumstance, but somewhere along the line I was in trouble. I was having some kind of issue in free mode, and I grabbed this car off the street and drove off with it. And I decided this was going to be a keeper, and I kept it. I upgraded it to the, um, I think on a sale to this uh to this mode, to the Apocalypse Dominator. But I kept the original paint and the original wheels so you could tell it was this car. 
the one that had saved me and uh, gave it all the upgrades and modifications. So here you have it. So yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's a, another point of sentimental value. Now this is not, it, it, it is, you know, a last V8 kind of car. It is an Imperator, but it's a Future Shock one. Just so that I could have on, on this character a Future Shock with the big spinning blades up front and the machine guns. And the blades out back and the blades on the sides that come out. If I was actually in an Arena War kind of situation, and there's, there's the mine launch of the border launchers, I would have one to, to drive around. And I've done it up in kind of a, a Lotus sort of paint job, like a John Player special paint job. So... I don't know if you can have too many Imperators. They're really nice. Uh, Absolutely. Swinging over here, now you have an Impala. What did they call those? Impaler instead of Impala. This is my future shock Impaler. Again, done up in Lemonade Man kind of paint job. We were, we were working to a theme for a while there. It's not as good as the Imperator, I don't think. I don't think it's as fast. I don't think it's as as uh as deadly but periodically i do take this into the arena it's not a bad car to drive at all and i'm fond of it and we're keeping it so now speaking of things that are pretty good in the arena this this thing the future shock what brutus yeah i can I haven't used the brutus in a while i haven't done bomb ball in a while this is my go-to for bomb ball it's big. It's able to really, you know, hustle the balls along with those, uh, with the ram out front. It's got the laser on the side so that you can shoot the shoot the balls into the the goal there, and it looks cool. I forget why I put the spy hunter plate on it, but it's it's a plate. It needed a plate. Um, I'm trying to remember why I left the windows. Completely unshielded. I think it's so you could shoot weapons out of them. But I don't quite remember. Maybe it just it just spoiled the look for me, or you know, there were game modes where you were locked in first person. I just left it wide open. But that's that's the Brutus. This the space bike. This is the apocalypse. What death bike? Yeah, the death bike. This is probably the best thing to take into any sort of uh, actual arena war kind of thing. It works on bomb ball. It works in almost anything. It's uh, it's I, I don't even know if you can get knocked off of it because of the way things work. But those those blades up front do as much damage as, as anything, and the the gun, the dual guns and the blades, you could really just sidle right up to somebody and just cut them to ribbons. Uh, I have big spoke tires now because, I, as I recall, the death bike is kind of based on the gargoyle, so you should get some glitching speed action if you get this in a wheelie with the big spoke tires on it. It may or may not work. I don't know, but this is it's a great bike. It really is. And I do have, I think on the other character I have a space version of it, but the death bike, that's, that's sweet. And we're back around. Like, wow, that was a lot of, a lot of stuff to review, and we have... Th Two more floors. Let's get on down to B1. I'm starting to look for parking now because I think I have some parking here. Maybe not immediately. Now we, we're going to talk here about these. We got a Vigero and a, and a Vigero Custom, I believe. And they don't look at all like it's not even based on the same car, same manufacturer. But they have coolness. They each has their own coolness. This one is painted and from the side, it's a little too squared off. It's a little too Vigero versus, you know, a Dundreary. It's a Dundreary versus um, Vapid. But this, if you squint at, looks like, you know, the, the family 77 Thunderbird that I had growing up. It was the right paint scheme. Very fun of cruising around with this, and it's, it's nice to cruise around with this one too. Even though it's the tech, this this one is not a low rider. That one is good cars. Um, this is a Tasco, Casco. Okay, that was close. The Casco is again another really nice driving car, another sports classic. Love the way that drives. 
you never get to drive it, but it, so it's like one of those things where I could say, well, you could do without that. You could make that a, a, a parking space. But again, I think it's removed, and it's if it's not removed. I think wasn't this part of one of the the uh, early um, one of the heist missions or something like that? And it's a, kind of a semi-important car, so we're we'll keeping. We're keeping. I don't really anticipate selling anything here, but we're going to keep it for what we can now. Uh, I just said not going to sell anything. Wow, this is tempting. I mean, the, the slam truck, it handles weird. It handles like a drift car. You can't put a car on it. You can't use it as a ramp. It's just here as a decoration. On the other hand, you would imagine with all these cars here in an arena kind of thing that you'd end up with a flatbed. Even if it's a ramp bed or something like that. So, I mean, it makes sense to have... I think I got this as part of the FOMO panic of 2023, and then uh, they didn't remove it. So I, mean, I could remove this if I really had to. I could sell it off. Not going to today, because it does kind of look pretty in this corner. Just by itself, like this is something, you know, I'd been to Europe and bought an Italian uh, race truck collar and fixed it back up. Eh, from the RP point, we'll keep it. We zip over here. This is the Lynx, I believe. Is it a Lynx? Yeah. Lynx is a good car, but way expensive. I think I might have gotten this on sale. I may have I may have done this up because again, it's it's in roughy colors because this is another hateful machine. Does this have the hateful plate? He hates it just because of the uh, yeah, hateful. This is another one of his hateful machines because it's so expensive, but it's really not a bad car. And I don't mind driving the Lynx. So that's a keeper. I think I drove a Lynx. It wasn't quite the same color, but I drove a Lynx that got... That's the car I got, that glitched the way where I got dumped out of the race when, uh, once Pancro got in. But you gotta have a Lynx. It's, well, you don't have a... Actually, I would not recommend buying the Lynx uh, unless you get a really good deal on it, which I think I did. But it's here for now. This is interesting because here you have the prairie, and I believe I have an identical prairie on my other character. So, do I change the build on one? Or do I get rid of one? It's another bruffy thing. Because the prairie is one that for some reason they have good memories with on the channel. I, I think that was before my time of watching. I don't know. I mean, it's not a fast uh, compact car by any stretch. It's this car is not fast. So if we really had to, we could we could make room here. But for right now, we'll just we'll just move on. We'll just, we'll, we'll just ponder this later. The Dynasty. Am I saying that right? Yeah, the Dynasty. Again, not a fast car, but I mean, look at this. I try to remember, does this look like one of the cars in the original Mad Max where everybody gets attacked or something like that? Or is it just similar colors, paint scheme? I forget. I may have done something, you know, something subliminal here. Something influenced by memories that I don't identify. But here you have it. you got to have a dynasty. Again, it doesn't, doesn't drive very fast, but I mean, it looks cool. It's a good, it's a good garage decoration, so we're going to keep that. Ah, I drift Tampa. This one was done originally all in, was done originally all, I think in yellow, then in green when I finally unlocked the green. And then when Ken Block died, we did it all flat black for a while. And this is what I've come up with since, you know, decided I need to do something other than flat black. I have not yet converted this into a true drift racer. I don't know that I am. I haven't really done I haven't been called in my own mind and self to do the drift racing stuff yet as I'm recording this I do feel like I need to get to that at some point and this will probably be the car that I do and depending on how all that shakes out but we'll see what happens for but right now know that it's not going anywhere you although you may see it repainted a few times what's next ooh Dominator ASP this is a Beautiful car. I got this one. I had another one someplace, but the, the uh, I think you're going to see that probably in the last video. 
But I got this because this was supposed to be some sort of limited edition. How to buy it now. Uh, livery. And because it's a snakeskin livery on an, a Dominator ASP, it had to have it. And I don't, I don't know if that's secondary primary or if that's just the way the skin is. But, wow, it is, it is beautiful and it runs great. It's an ASP. Um, don't have another Cerberus here or anything like that. That's the workshop. That's where the Cerberus will go. May yet get, but... Are we back around? We're back around. Okay, well, only one more of these floors to do. Uh, Absolutely. And now it gets even weirder and weirder and weirder kind of stuff. Okay. Here we have uh, another one of the hero cars. This is Michael's car done up. Again, much as I had it in the original video game where, you know, in the in the single player. The um, This is a tailgater. Obey tailgater. Nothing special as far as being a car, but it is one of the hero cars. And they were available for a limited amount of time, so I grabbed them. I have all three now. You saw the one in the, in the nightclub. Then there's this, which you say, well, that doesn't look like that doesn't look like Trevor's Bodie, but I found you couldn't really match up the pink. I may have to respray his or something like that. I wonder if I could redo his like this. Because I decided to go uptown and upscale on this, you know, on this version of my Bodie. That's a uh, crew over chrome with all carbon. And then the custom blue headlights to go with it. It's really, it's fancy dancy. I take this out just because it's just that fancy dancy periodically. Like, all right, you have something that has rust spots, but they're chrome rust spots. I, you gotta like it. The way that all worked out was really great. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, crew over chrome, if you go in and you paint your car chrome, and you immediately go and select the crew color and click that. It will let you do that. And now you've got two layers of paint and it looks really spectacular. Some room there for another Cerberus if I decide to get all three of the possibilities. This is, of course, my Oliver Tree car. And it's what the, what the, the monstrosity. It's the Oliver Tree monstrosity. Based, on, you know, kind of roughly on the paint, on the kind of paint colors. On the colors you see in his... His turbo outfit with the blue pants and the... Sometimes the, the jacket looks blue and pink to me. Sometimes it looks purple and pink. It depends on what the color balance is on the music video. Uh, it's not a, an HSW, obviously, because I'm on PC. But this car runs nice, I gotta admit. And once again, I said before, I'm not really huge into like rave kind of music. I don't know what you'd call Oliver Tree, really. But the videos were popular in the house for a little while. The, you know, kids liked them. And I'm like, that's, some of that stuff's hilarious. hilarious. Some of it's extremely warped. But, I mean, I have to do an Oliver Tree kind of build on this one when I got it. Still don't know if that video is ever going to, that build video is ever going to take off because it has Oliver Tree's name in it. But, you know, hey, it was, it was an experiment. And we did the experiment. And that's, this is going to stay for a while. Newest acquisition here. This is the golden black uh, Dominator GT. This is the car I said might be. I haven't. I mean, Bruffy hasn't tested it yet as far as. I think he has tested it. But I haven't seen. I haven't seen the retest on the Buffalo STX. So the the current numbers on this are better than the old numbers on the STX. I don't know which how it's going to play out. But I have got one. I haven't raced it where it really wasn't snow yet. So we have to we have to fool with this. I may have done a little bit with it. But we're, the next time we go muscle racing, it's going to be this one. We're going to see how it plays out. See how it rolls. Vision. Yeah, I love the Vision. I was, always, I was very happy with this paint job, too. And the way this, this turned out. This build. So one of those things where it's a fast car. Is it a top fast car? Eh, maybe. You know, it has its moments. So, Vision. All right, we got the Lucky Plucker truck. The the whole uh, inspired by a uh, what you call it? That Hooper. That's the other 
the rail thing. Stroker Ace. The other Stroker Ace uh, related kind of cars here. I may do one of my my sabers or something else to do a Stroker Ace build on it, but for right now this is a, a Stroker Ace pickup truck. You, if you watch the racing videos, you see this one regularly. You also see this one regularly because I want to do two builds of these because these were. I don't know if you recall, these were FOMO cars for a while where they were only available for a week, so I got two of them on this character and another on uh, at least one more, maybe two more on the other character. But uh, this is the lager beer one where it's like a deep warm brown with the. The, uh, the nicely matching... I, mean, I think that, that teal goes really nicely with the brown. You'll see, I think, on my uh, my Riata and the other show, you can see teal and brown. It's, I think that's a good mix. Race both of them. I just alternate, you know, whatever the mood is for the day. But yeah, both keepers. Not, not even a point of discussion. Uh, let's see. An empty space! So now we're up to three spaces. Ooh. Ah... Yeah, hot ring hellfire. Yeah, you know, this is this works for me. Um, the whole function where you get more downforce when the hood flaps open up is weird, but it is useful. When you tap the brakes to get a bunch of downforce. I don't know that the trucks aren't just better in general because most of the tracks, you get enough handling out of the trucks you don't need this, and the trucks are a little bit faster in top speed. So I think I'll mostly drive the trucks. But there are certain tracks that have some, some wild turns in them that I think this one would come in handy. I mean, the Sabre just has good handling, so the Sabre probably work on those too, but I don't know. This is it's definitely something to consider. Do I redo the red? This is the original paint scheme. I got it with, do I do something different with this? I don't know. For right now, it's going to stay as it is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. That's all for this garage, folks. That's what we have here. So we've now out of all of these videos, I've found three parking spots. Rockstar, you gotta give us another garage. I mean, I really—it's like there's just not enough spots here that I, you know, unless it's something absolutely critical, and I'm not getting it. So if you could, fight in your heart, get you know, get some some garages going here for us, old gen people. Uh, that would be great. They, they did add a 100-car garage, but you have to have GTA Plus to get it, and that means you have to be on New Gen. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, if this is as many parking spots as I have, and I don't think I'm getting any more from my next location. You'll see that in a little bit. Probably a week, <laughs> if, if this goes according to plan. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night. Uh, Absolutely.